Okay, so I'd like to uh, thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to talk uh, about uh, some of my results uh, in this, uh, uh, before this audience. Uh, this work was, uh, actually this ongoing work is uh, uh, done at the SN Bose National Center of Basic Sciences, Calcutta. And this work was initiated by my graduate student, Shuman Dattu, who is now, of course, working on a different problem. Uh, well, now, the topic is analytical form of forces in hydrophobic collapse. So let me try to explain what, ex uh, what I mean by hydrophobic collapse. You can, uh, there are lots of chemical moieties which actually do not like water. So if you put in uh, such uh, moiety into water, then water is expelled away from surface. And it turns out that uh, many of the, uh, uh, let's say in, in particular, in biological systems, many of the processes are driven by this tendency of chemical moiety to, dr driven, to be driven away from water. Like for, for example, so okay, it doesn't look so nice. So protein, for example, is an, uh, for example, has got, you know, Partly, uh, a part of the protein molecule is, uh, is uh, they don't like um, uh, water molecules. Partly, they do. And as a result of this kind of mixed interaction, uh, the proteins actually fold. And one of the driving forces for the protein folding is, for example, uh, is, is essentially the combination of hydro, uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic interaction. Now, this is good because, you know, protein folding is required for, uh, for the functionality. But there are occasions in which the proteins, uh, you know, by some other process may be misfolded. And in such cases, what happens that the hydrophobic part, which should not be exposed to the, sol uh, to the water, they actually get exposed and it doesn't like it. So as a result of it, what happens, many such protein molecules actually come together and forms an aggregate. Now this aggregation is uh, you know, sometimes, you know, pretty much harmful. For example, uh, the protein aggregation in the, uh, are, are responsible for many, many neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's disease is also uh, associated with, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in kidney malfunctions and then uh, bile mal malfunctions. So there are many such examples where uh, the, uh, the misfolded protein which the aggregate actually uh, hinders the physiological processes. So, so this is an example from the biological world, but this, <clears throat> the process of hydrophobic uh, species coming together is not just restricted only to, uh, to biological world. In, in physical context also, there are many situations in which the hydrophobic species actually comes together, and that becomes uh, important to understand the phase behavior and also the, the applications of such, uh, such uh, moisture. Now, <clears throat> okay. The other interesting thing I should point out that the moment you put in some hydrophobic species, and if it's a large hydrophobic uh, solute, you can think of it as a solute and solvent. Solute is a species that you put into this into the matrix, and solvent is the is the water. So as a result of uh, you know putting in this thing, the hydrogen bonded network. There's something very important for water molecules that heard in the previous talk. The hydrogen bonded network actually get disturbed, disrupted, and uh, the water actually, you know, what happens that it, because the solute does not like the water molecule, the solute actually repelled away a little bit. And this disrupts the bonding pattern in the vicinity of the solute. And these water molecules uh, in, the, uh, in this region, which is relatively uh, having pretty much less density, like a vapor region you can think about. And the water molecule in the vapor region becomes partially ordered. And this region because the hydrogen bond network is, uh, is, uh, is essentially broken in that region. You can think of the water molecules essentially given by the oxygen coordinates alone. So that actually simplifies the uh, whole description of the, of the situation. Now, <clears throat> the uh, breaking of hydrogen bonds in the vicinity of solute, especially in, uh, the length scale dependence, like how big is a solute, small or big, etc. this has been studied for a long, long time. And there's a fair amount of understanding. Now, if you put in two hydrophobic moieties, they come together, which is essentially hydrophobic collapse that's known for a long, long time. What is, there are numerical works like simulations, uh, particularly, uh, which actually, you know, 
shows that the hydrophobic uh, uh, the hydrophobic collapse uh, is essentially driven by the attraction mediated by the water repellent water molecules and uh, lots of numerical simulation studies have been done what is not known for example which is something that will be pretty much useful like what can i derive a form of the force associated when the two hydrophobic spaces are coming together so is there a simple way of looking into the forces that should act and uh, some kind of analytical form because that would be useful to understand the um, the properties of a solute the reason it could be useful for example when we try to understand the solute then a large portion of time of you know computation pattern simulation goes in uh, in uh, simulating the water molecules themselves the water is numerously very very large so if we can have some kind of effective description uh, which uh, should work I mean, if if there's some working effective description then a lot of computation time would be saved because you don't have to really talk in terms of water anymore you can talk in terms of the effective interaction now for the effective attraction uh, which uh, people have found in experiments particularly it's somewhat non trivial if the reason is well there's no most of the cases there's no direct evidence of hydrophobic uh, attraction the reason is the most of the experiments done they they are pretty, uh, typically amphiphilic molecules so as a result of which amphiphilic means it, a part of the molecule may love water some part of the molecule may hate water now what is what sometimes this demarcation becomes very very difficult you know that's the reason experimental uh, evidence of purely effect of hydrophobic is somewhat difficult to discern nevertheless people have looked into like you know typically more hydrophobic species like the species in which the hydrophobic interest is predominant hydrophobic part is predominant for such species if you increase temperature what happens one looks into the and this, this kind of experiments have, have been done for long lot uh, quite a number of uh, systems uh, by uh, particularly in the context of uh, alkyl chains uh, where you can actually vary the hydrophobicity by uh, by changing the, the the length of the of the of the chain so what happens that the with increase of temperature the cluster size actually changes in a non monotonic way and it shows a max maximum which is something has not been understood because typically what we believe that as we increase temperature the effective interaction should actually reduce as a result the clustering tendency should be typically less but that's not something is found in the case of uh, such clusters where hydrophobic interest is apparently should be uh, more predominant okay so now comes in the uh, part of the work that we have done the way that we present this uh, this system is like a solute and there's a solvent we don't really talk in terms of the hydrogen bonding network because as i said in the vicinity of uh, of the solute the hydrogen bond network is essentially broken so you can think in terms of oxygen atoms themselves <coughs> now what have if you have a solute then you know like uh, so this is a solute and these are the water molecules well uh, the picture is not so good because the scale this is much bigger compared to those molecules so there is a region over which the density of the solute is much less so you can think of it like a bubble you know people use the word nano bubble sometimes in the, in such context so there's a bubble uh, of radius uh, lambda 0 which is stabilized in the system if we had just one uh, particle now just see that there's a solute so so there is an interface which is generated between the vapor of and the uh, liquid portion of the solvent now if you have a couple of solutes like this and imagine that you are putting those, uh, the two solutes uh, in close vicinity so as a result of you know bringing these two solutes in the close vicinity the water which was in, uh, in between the two solutes will be released and as a result uh, there will be like a uh, osmotic pressure difference between this region and that region the pressure is coming because of simple laplace pressure at the work at the interface and this unbalanced pressure actually drives the effective interaction so that's the basic physical picture that we explore in this calculation the first part of the calculation is that we try to look at what would be stable radius of the vapor around the solute which actually repels the solvent so solvo so basically uh, in a solvophobic system like this uh, what would be the equilibrium uh, radius the way that you calculate is essentially using uh, traditional density functional theory uh, i won't get into the details of what this thing is the way that you can think of like if you have a solute 
And let's say the system is like you have solvent. You put a solute which dislikes the solvent particles. So as a result, the solvent will, will be repelled away from the, in the vicinity of the solute. Now, if you want to calculate how much work you need to do, if you want to put the solute back into the solvent, like so that essentially cavity formation energy and that energy should be minimum if the system comes to equilibrium. So this is what is calculated. So this is essentially coming a contribution uh, that comes from the entropy. Then this is a contribution that comes from the, uh, from the uh, uh, fact that the uh, system is correlated. And this is the external uh, potential that is generated by the solvent, the solute itself. And this is the uh, contribution that comes from the surface tension. The surface tension is taken from a logical uh, way. And if you uh, minimize it, well, I didn't write the expression for lambda zero. Lambda zero is the radius at the, of the nano bubble uh, at equilibrium, and that will involve typically the correlation. So this is essentially C zero, which is integration over the uh, direct part, uh, particle correlation. And this is com essentially compressibility of the system and is also given by the surface tension. So basically the surface tension and compressibility are involved in uh, stabilizing the vapor phase around the, around the solvent, around the solute, which is something one would expect. Next, what uh, we do, so if we know the radius, then typically one can calculate the, uh, okay, as I was saying that the solvent will be repelled from the, the region of, of the overlapping uh, 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 bubble reg region and the Laplace pressure is working around surrounding this thing except for this part. So if, and this Laplace pressure is taken to be uniform over the surface and given by the local curvature and times the surface tension. And then if you if integrate over the entire surface, then you get an effective interaction which will look something like this. And this interaction, well, S is the surface to surface distance. So this, look at this expression. So alpha is like a, and it, see, the interaction force actually is linear in S as the leading order. So the, the effective interaction is given in terms of alpha, which is this, like a spring constant, but the spring constant is dependent on the thermodynamic conditions, uh, like the radius of, this, uh, of the bubble as the surface tension. And I, I, I just remind you that the radius of the bubble is given in terms of the compressibility of surface tension themselves. So there's a competition factor is coming in this end alpha. The way that you can think of this is physically very simple. What is happening that if you have a couple of particles and if you try to increase the separation between the two particles, the liquid will be flowing inside the, uh, the channel and the particles do not like it. So it will try to get rid of these liquids and this is how the restoring actually occurs and this is the expression for the restoring force that is effective in the system. And Jaydeep, you have to wrap up. Okay. Yeah, this is the last slide. So basically, okay. Now, uh, more, okay, now if I look at the expression for alpha, which is a spring constant, it has got the, the, uh, the factor that comes from the, uh, from the uh, uh, surface tension and also a factor that is uh, dependent on the compressibility. And we know the compressibility increases as we increase temperature, as we, in fact, at the critical point, the compressibility diverges, surface tension goes to zero. And this is what actually uh, contributes to the competition that, that comes in as a result of which you do see uh, a maximum in the, in, the, uh, in the spring constant as a function of temperature. And that is what experimentally being found. We have done this calculation uh, in the context of Leonard Jones uh, system as a perturbation to uh, Parker's heavy picture of the, uh, of the uh, heart square diameter. And uh, what we are doing, uh, trying to do now is to apply this kind of uh, formalism to understand if we can explain the aggregation of biomolecules. In case of biomolecules, of course, the situation is more complicated. There is a competitive interactions like the electrostatic interaction is there. So one has to take care of that and trying to look at the kinetics because there are lots of kinetic data available uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, <laughs> protein aggregation. So we're trying to understand them. If we can, then probably this is a very good model to uh, replace water by some effective interaction. So thank you very much. Yeah. Maybe if I yeah. miss something because, huh. you know, uh, this, the, 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 the description as far as I understood yeah. was, was the, uh, the calculation of the asakura usawa interaction. Well, there's some what difference. Is, which is the there's difference? Some difference. Yeah. There's some difference. The difference comes in, in Asakura, uh, um, uh, Asakura Osawa model is more, mainly geometric factor, okay? 
in this case is not geometry, it's thermodynamics. Okay? The, the, uh, everything is happening because the bubble is stabilized. And the bubble is stabilized because uh, you, you actually, uh, you know, the interaction that can squeeze the particles out, that depends on the compressibility. But then it also has to stabilize via the surface tension, then only have the bubble, right? So this is where it is different, completely different to Asakura, Asakura type of picture. But largely, yes, I mean, uh, that's a kind of depletion, so also a depletion, but it's a temperature media, thermodynamic media depletion, not geometric depletion. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, they do, yes. From what I understand, the non monotonic system yeah. comes from uh, a specific water as opposed to something um, but I don't see where that is coming. Uh, well, I mean, yes, that's certainly true because the experiments that I know of are, are all essentially uh, alkyl chains in, uh, in, in water. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how, uh, I mean, I would believe because we don't consider particular water here, it should be applicable to other solvents. But experiments not being done, why, I do not know. But maybe one can, uh, one should look into the experiments with other kind of molecules as well. I mean, other kind of solvents. Okay. Uh, let's all thank Jadev. So the next speaker is Prabhalmaiti from